Jubilee Party yesterday nominated McDonald Mariga to contest the Kibra by election on Jubilee ticket. And from the onset, it was clear that McDonald Mariga was the favored one to win that nomination process. But behind the scenes, there were high voltage politics pitting the allies of the Deputy President William Samoy Ruto on one side and those of President Uru Kenyatta on one side, especially on the control of Jubilee Party. So today I want us to look at how that nomination process confirms that William Ruto actually outwitted, outmaneuvered, and outsmarted President Uru Kenyatta's allies, especially Rafael Toju, over the control of Jubilee Party. But before we do that, kindly remember to subscribe. Jubilee Party yesterday nominated Mark Donald Mariga to contest for the Kibera by election. And whether Mariga is going to win or not is something the people of Kibra will decide in a matter of days. But the question is, is MacDonald Mariga a project of William Samoy Ruto? And what political objective was William Samoy Ruto trying to achieve by the nomination of MacDonald Mariga? In my view, William Samoy Ruto wanted to achieve several political objectives. He wanted to take control of the Jubilee Party, and he successfully achieved that. Why am I saying so? During the funeral service of the late Ken Okoth, it was clear that the Jubilee Party never intended to sponsor any candidate in Kibran. And none other than the senator for Nairobi, Johnson Sakaja, captured this. And he wished that in 2017, I mean, he wished that during the by-election, he would actually campaign together with Rail Odinga. And you know, Sakaja is a lawyer who contested for the Senate in Nairobi. And according to his figures, it's only in Kibra where he was defeated heavily by, 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 by Edwin Sifuna, who contested on ODM ticket. And Kibra for a long time has been assumed to be the, to be the stronghold of Raila Amolo Odinga. Even Moy tried severally to lock out Raila Odinga in Kibra without any success. Jubilee Party used all the possible tricks, including looting the NYS in Kibra, just to win the hearts of the people of Kibra. But they never succeeded. But for the first time, William Samoy Ruto, through Marega, are now trying to dare Raila Amolo Odinga in Kibra. Remember, of all the 16 aspirants, who contested and were interviewed by Jubilee Party yesterday, none of them applied to contest in Kibra. In fact, all the major aspirants applied to contest on ODM ticket, apart from Eliud Owalo, former aide to Raila Odinga, who knew and decided early enough that for him, he was not going to contest on ODM ticket. He was going to contest on ANC ticket. An ODM party attracted a record, was it initially they were around 50, but that number reduced to 20 something. And by the time people were now going now for the nominations, it reduced to 20 to, to 11. So 11 aspirants on ODM tickets are actually, are actually squaring out to choose one individual. So McDonald Mariga is going to face Eli Duwalo, who is a former aide to Rai Lodinga is going to face the ODM candidate. The candidate ODM party is going to nominate and is going to face the Ford Kenya candidate. So the question is, is William Samoy Ruto keen on Kibra politics? Or what was his game plan? If you ask me, William Samoy Ruto wanted to flex his muscles in Jubilee party. For those who might not know, Jubilee Secretariat is divided into two. There's a wing which is allied to the deputy president, William Samoy Ruto. And there's a wing which is allied to President Uru Kenyatta. And that wing is headed by Rafael Tojo and David Murabe. Remember, David Murabe resigned as the chairman, but is still an official of the party as per the registrar of political parties. And the rumors is that President Uru Kenyatta declined to accept the resignation of David Murade from Jubilee Party. So those wings in Jubilee 
is what was playing out during the Mariga nomination process. And initially, when the name of Mariga emerged online, together with the other, I think there were six, Rafael Tuju denounced that letter, that he never wrote that letter. But whoever wrote that letter, or for that letter, was a smart guy. The first thing he did, he submitted the list to the IBC, and the IBC received the letter. Because there was a deadline to be met. Then later on, they agreed that the party was going to choose a candidate. And it was clear that it was clear that the person who was going to be given that ticket was McDonald Mariga. Because this is the, pro the project of William Samoy Rudo. And although McDonald Mariga denied it yesterday, listen in to him. No, 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 that's my decision. Yeah. Why am I telling you? No, because I want to keep back to the community. Yeah, I want to keep it because I know, I know what people uh, no <laughs> I think that is not a project of William Samairuto. But that's a tag which is not going to disappear anytime soon. The question is, what political objective is William Samairuto trying to achieve? If you ask me, William Ruto is well aware that McDonald Mariga is not going to win in Kibra for so many reasons. In fact, in my next video is I'm going to dissect why I strongly believe McDonald Mariga might not have a chance in Kibera. The odds are against him. So what political objective was the deputy president trying to achieve? In my view, the deputy president is not keen on winning Kibera. The deputy president was keen on sending a strong message to President Uru Kenyatta and his allies over the control of the Jubilee Party. And he has achieved it. And these are some of the political objectives which the deputy president wanted to achieve. The first political objective is the control of Jubilee Party. If you've been keenly following the politics in Jubilee Party, there was a time when that politics was so high voltage to an extent that the allies of the deputy president started, started thinking about forming a political party so that in case the William, I mean, in case President Ruki Nyata's allies would not allow him to run on Jubilee ticket, then he was going to have a political party. And at that point, even the branding, William Ruto actually started rebranding himself back into the URP colors. But by yesterday's event, the deputy president stamped his authority on Jubilee Party. So he's now the one who is controlling Jubilee Party. Remember how these things started. The first step was to write a letter, whether it was fake or not. And just within a few hours, then the names of those aspirants the first letter was to invite the aspirants. The letter was just circulated online. And within one hour, names of six aspirants had actually been submitted to Jubilee, forwarded to IBC, and IBC had actually acknowledged receiving them. That was the second extra. So by the time Rafael Tuju and his crew were trying to say, okay, that's not our letter, they were really late. These guys had sent the letter to the IBC. The IBC had, 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 had accepted the names. So, it, which means now these guys were now eligible to run. And because Jubilee Party didn't want to appear as a, a divided house, Rafael told you had to play ball. But in the process of playing ball, they also identified a candidate. They identified a candidate. And I'm told even yesterday, the board was split right in the middle whether Mariga should be given a ticket or someone else. And that someone else was actually the, an ally of the wing allied to the president. So the, the, the deputy president now controls Jubilee Party because he, he, he has done this now. This is the second time. I think where was this? In uh, Wajir, Wajir, where, where Kolosh also stood, contested, the same thing almost played out. He forced Kolosh on Jubilee Party. Number two, it is also now going to be clear 
that William Samoy Ruto is now not going to be worried about Jubilee nominations anymore. He has identified a, a procedure or a method which is going to use to influence nominations in any future elections, including up to 2022. If, if you've been following the happenings in Jubilee Party, you'll realize one thing, that most people fighting William Ruto in central Kenya, they are doing that because they believe the deputy president locked them out during the nomination process in 2017. And from the look of things, William Ruto was smart enough to realize that for him to succeed in Jubilee Party, he needed to control that elections board. Because the elections board is actually the group which has a final say on who contests what in the Jubilee Party. And he tested this again, and he has confirmed that indeed that election board is still, is still, is still loyal, loyal to him. So any time from today, moving forward, William Ruto will determine who will contest what position in Jubilee and who will be given Jubilee ticket using that elections board. Number three is the upcoming Jubilee elections. It's just a matter of days for Jubilee to conduct the elections. And by taking control of Jubilee party, the way William Ruto has actually done it now, it will be now easy for him to direct or to control that particular Jubilee elections. Because the, 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 the term of uh, interim officials, that's Rafael Toju. I don't know the Jubilee chairman. I don't know, I don't know them, by the way. I just know Rafael Toju and David Murade. Their term is coming to an end and the party is going to conduct an elections. Whether that elections will be conducted or not is something we still don't know. But William Ruto is going now to control that elections. Because by controlling the, the, this kind of high-stake high vol, voltage politics, where he forced President Ruru to accept a contest with Raila Odinga, then forcing his candidate to be given the ticket. Because I'm told Rafael Tuju is not even a registered voter in Kenya. Forcing him to be given the ticket is not something very easy. Number three, I mean, number four, William Ruto is also sending a strong message to President Ruto Kenyatta. He's telling President Ruto Kenyatta that in Jubilee, we both have stakes. And because you don't have elections to contest in 2022, I'm the one who has an election in 2022 I'm going to control this party. I'm going to control it whether you like it or whether you don't like it. And that's the message. And that message has reached President Ruru Kenyatta and he has nothing he can do. The president can do nothing about that. The deputy president is the one who's going to contest. And the deputy president, Anaji Panga. So whether the president likes it, whether the president doesn't like it, it's up to him. But the matter, the fact of the matter is the Deputy President Anajipanga for 2022. And Anajipanga, without the President's input, is telling the President, for you, Uli, Ulipanga Yako. On this one, let me Jipanga. And that's why, let me start with the Kibra. And William Ruto is very smart and shrewd. You see, the first thing he has succeeded in doing is to convince people that there are more lawyers in Kibra than Lewis which is a total lie. For those who understand how Nairobi politics is played, Nairobi politics is normally played in a very special way. Lewis would always, Luo from, uh, Luo from uh, Donham would go and register in Kibra just to get a Luo MP in Kibra. That's how, what has always sustained Raila Dinga for a very long time in Kibra. Lawyers in Kibra would not, most of them would not register in Kibra. Those lawyers in Kibra would go and register in, in Westlands and also in uh, Dagoret North. And in the last election, Kisi's are, numbers have also increased so much in Nairobi. But they identified a constituency called Dagoret North and they went and registered in that constituency. And even, let's even take Langata. When Nixon Correir won, why was Nixon Correir transporting voters from, from Kericho to register in Langata? That's how politics in Nairobi is. So this, this idea of all oh, CG lawyers are the majority in uh, Langata, I mean in Kibra, that's hogwash. Because if they were, 
that will be reflected even in the number of nominated MCS, of, of elected MCS in the area. How many lawyer elected MCS are in Kibra? If you ask me, none. There, there's only one. And that one was just, ODM party just wanted to appease the lawyers. One of my friends contested there. And he won the nominations, free and fair. But a guy, I think, was, was is it called Kase? That guy was just given this ticket. And that kind of, of lies has now found its way into the media. He's saying Lewis are 22. Is it 30 or 22? I don't know. Then 30, then Kikuis are 22. If Kikuis are 22, then that can be reflected in the numbers. Let's forget about the, 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 the parliamentary. Let's go to the parliament to the presidential results. How many votes did President Ruru Kenyatta got or get in Kibra? How many votes? What of Sakaja? And what of the women rep who contested in Kibra in in in, in on Jubilee ticket? How many votes did he get? Shabash. How many? That's how you look at these things. How, how many votes did Sakaja manage? Because Sakaja is a lawyer. How many votes did he get in Kibra? But William Ruto has now decided to face Raila Amolo Odinga in Kibra. And is doing that by forcing Uru Kenyatta to throw the line. I don't know what you think. And if you are bumping on this video for the first time, what you do on this channel is simple. We analyze politics. So the best thing you can do is just one. Hit the subscribe button so that anytime you produce another video, you get notified. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Thank you and please enjoy your day.